Hey, what's going on guys? Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. Right, last time I showed you the Paludarium and said what we were going to do to it. We were going to make it into an Amazon scape. We were going to do all that kind of stuff with it. Now then, spanner in the works. Been down to my local fish shop and I fell in love with this certain fish, which I'm going to show you in a minute. Stunning guy. Potential to get up to maybe 17, 18 inches in length and um, and he's, he's a good size, or she, can't sex these guys visually. And um, but I'm really looking forward to introducing you to, and he, or here, he or she is. Check him out, or her out. Oh, there you go, guys. There is he or she. Now, she's called a Fahaka Pufferfish. Now, you get these guys distributed all over the place in Africa, like the Nile, the Chad, Niger, Gambia, Senegal rivers, all over the place. But they have the potential to grow big. Now this little boy or girl is, I would say, around eight to probably nine inches long and, um, and nice and fat, but very, very spooky at the moment. Now I said earlier, I think, well maybe I didn't say this earlier, but I think that that has been kept in a very, very small tank or with other fish that maybe have been bullying it. Now, a lot of people, are, well, Fahaka puffers are seriously aggressive puffer fish in the first place, and uh, we'll get into that in a minute. But, may have been bigger fish in there that were pushing it around, or it maybe it was just in a very, very small aquarium, or maybe it wasn't treated very nice because it's absolutely super shy. It's got no, um, there's no bravery in this little guy at the moment. I know it's, I've had him for about, I would say, three days now. I'll call him, I'll call him him for now. Um, and he's, he's been, you know, fairly, you can see by the eyes, he's very, very clever, very knowledgeable what's going on around his surroundings. And um, watching me, he's got those little beads on me as well, and on the harlequins that are in there with him. Um, hello, you lot. Now they've been spawning like crazy in this tank as well. I'll put some footage up of that in a while during the video. You'll see them spawning on the Elodia, which I put in there. And um, the pork shops have been crossbreeding with the other Harlequins, which is interesting. So if anything comes out, well, uh, it'll be interesting to see what they turn out like. Anyway, back to Mr. Fahaka Puffer. Now these, I picked him up down there. I looked in the tank and he was only in a little tank and he looked so sad. He was hidden under a branch and um, little eyes just looking around like he is now. They were feeding him well down there on their cockles and different things like that. But he's obviously been eating well because they've got on their little teeth, normally they can protrude when they get too long. If you let them get too long by feeding them um, soft foods constantly, their teeth will overgrow like a rabbit's teeth does. And you've actually got to physically clip them yourself, which I don't fancy doing, but it is look okay. So um, in fact, I've got a big prawn right here. Look at that. Let's see what he makes of this. Now I'm just gonna gently lower it down. All right, I'll just let that go. There he goes. Right down there, boom. Let's see what you make of that, if you're hungry or not. I don't think he's gonna be too fussed about this. He may surprise you, he may turn away from it. Like I said, he's very, very shy of anything that's near him, even if it's food at the moment, he tends to turn around, sorry about my reflections, and go back on the stones at the back. Or you may surprise me and leap on it and scoff it in a minute. But I can't see any visual signs of any parasites or any in, you know, external problems on him at all. But like I said, they've got the potential now to grow very big. Now with these little guys, I'll just give you a bit of background on them about the sizes and different things. Because like I said, they can get up to 17 inches long. Now, when you see them in the shops, they're no bigger than the little spotted puffers or the figure of eights that you see in your aquarium shops. Um, but like I say, they will outgrow your tank very quickly. They're fast growing puffer fish and they do eat a lot. So um, you could have to have very good filtration in your system and a very well established uh, bacterial colony in your filter for these guys, okay? Because they'll foul up the water and they'll, they're very susceptible to ammonia and nitrate in the water. So. Um, You've got to make sure that your tank's up to speed. Now this has been running for a long time, and uh, as you know, with, with fish in it, so and it's got two big filters on it, which are uh, filtering the water beautifully. 
Anyway, pH 7 to 8, pretty good pH range, temperature from 24 to 26, that's 75 to 78 Fahrenheit. Now food wise, they love fresh frozen foods, meat foods, cockles, crab legs, crayfish tails. You see a lot of these people on YouTube, which I'm not a fan of, chucking in live things and watching them smash them up like live crayfish and all that kind of stuff. You don't need to do that. You can just put in, you know, the bits of fresh food or the cockles in the shell or mussels in the shell. Now they'll chew that up and that'll take that beak down as well, okay? That's a good thing. Like prawns, like I just said, Breeding with these guys, it has been done, um, but it's very difficult when breeding these because obviously they don't tolerate many or any other fish really of the similar size in the tank with them because they're very territorial. And if they do manage to breed, then you've got, oh God knows how many little nutters running around all trying to take chunks out of each other because they've have got the same aggression problem as the parents from a very young age. So they'll start knocking, knocking each other to bits and you will need lots and lots of tanks to put them in, to sort them all out. So I'm not going to try and breed this, these guys before everybody leaps on me and says, go on, breed them, Mark, breed them. I'd love to, but it's finding another one of a similar size of a breeding age and then all those things that I just said. I'd rather just give this guy a really nice home and look after him and spoil him. He's looking at that prawn thinking, I'm going to have that as soon as he goes. Now, what I have noticed is, as well, he'll, he's that shy he, he, he waits until I leave and then he will come out and, um, and feed very, very shyly. And that's why the, the fish, the, uh, the harlequins, are buzzing, buzzing him all the time because when he does eat, puffer fish are messy eaters. And basically they'll chew it up, they'll swallow it, they'll spit it out, they'll suck it in and all little bits come off it. And, um, and they foul up the place a little bit. And as soon as they do, that's when the little cleaning crew comes in and, uh, and cleans up all the leftover bits. Now, uh, you've, like I said, these will not normally tolerate any other fish in their tanks. Now, faster fish like tetras, all those sort of family, he's never gonna get them, okay? It's like you trying to catch a mouse in a field. It's just, you're gonna be leaping all over the place. You're never gonna get them, and they're always gonna get away from you because they're not fast enough to do it. Other slower moving fish um, are gonna be a problem because when they wanna turn on a little bit of speed, and they'll be able to get hold of and bite and they can make a real mess of other fish as well when they when they have a go at them to push them out of their territory you know if they keep going at them normally they'll have a go at them once in the wild and they'll bully them out of their territory and then the fish will get the you know will get the gist that i've got to go but when they're housed in a in a big tank they can't get away sadly and they'll relentlessly chase them around and around um, and sadly they'll kill them in the end so never ever mix these with bigger fish. Like I said, smaller fish are fine. Obviously no shrimps. There is a few cherry shrimps in here, but he's left them alone. Um, I've been coming down every morning because they go behind the rocks and things and I can't get them out at the moment because I want to keep him stress-free as much as I can. Trying to get my approach as I come in nice and slow in the mornings to feed him. That's why it's early in the morning now. The lights haven't long come on. And this is where he's been sleeping. Now he's got six feet by two feet wide of tank to mooch around in and have a look around and explore with lots of different rocks and plants. And by the way, I, the majority was remove the dragon stone and keep the, uh, the pebbles and the sand substrate, which is what I've done, which is perfect for this guy because they're soft bodied. You don't want anything pointy in there if they go flying off and they hit something that's gonna damage an eye or so we've left the pebbles in there. He's made a little bed there. He's cleared the sand where his little tummy goes in and he settles in for the night. But he hasn't been doing much exploring. I've got a camera set up in here and I've been watching him from my living room. So he thinks I've gone, so I've been spying on him. And, um, and he's basically been going up and down the glass. He'll come out where he is. He'll come up against the glass, literally towards the camera. And he does, just does this big circle, round and round up and down and then he'll go round into the back and then he'll just go back into his little bed where he's there and chill out again or he'll grab his prawn eat that and then go back to sleep so he's got all this tank to have a little nosy around but i've yet to see him do it now like i said i've only had him for three days maybe and he's done this same behavior all the time so give it a couple of 
couple of weeks or maybe even a month and he gets used to me coming in and um, with the regular foods and obviously the regular water changes which is imperative for one of these guys got to keep that water pristine for him um, and hopefully then he'll get used to me and, uh, and we'll be able to feed him then a little bit nicer out of the tongs never try and feed one of these out of your hands guys because if he gets hold of your finger he's going to take a massive lump out of your finger and you're going to be crying especially for you younger viewers you'll probably lose a finger if your mum and dad gets one of these so keep your hands out the tanks um, what else can I tell you about him? As you can see, he's got his little engines going each side, those little fins just fluttering away there. They've got a huge tail on these as well, like a Mabu, if you're unfamiliar with them. Go and have a look at Mabu puffers. I think um, they've got one called Murphy on Aquarium Co-op, but he's huge. Uh, go and check him out. He's in a massive Mabu puffer who loves crunching up food. But you'll see the difference between him and this guy He's very, very active, always swimming around looking for food because they are absolute pigs for food normally. Normally, when you put a, a, a lump, an item of food in like this, they'll be on it in seconds. They'll smell that in the water and they'll jump on it straight away. And probably another six of them until they're so round that they just literally roll around on the floor. I've had a porcupine puffer many years back in a big marine tank that I had and he was huge. He was about half the size of a rugby ball. And, um, and he used to eat so much, he used to literally roll around until he digested some of that food. He used to get blown around by the powerheads. It was hilarious watching him. He used to steal everyone's food. He was a right pig, he was, but very funny to watch. Loads of character in these as well. And when you do, if, you, if you're going to buy one of these guys, because you're going to see them in your local fish shops, wherever you are in the world, just make sure that you've got a big tank for them to go in, okay? start off with the biggest tank possible think of it as these are going to get maybe up to 17 inches long okay which is huge and when you think about the girth of them as well and they're going to need massive filtration they're going to need a big tank so buy the best filters you can buy even if you're putting it in as a tiny little you know two inch long fry baby baby one it's going to shoot up in size in no time at all and before you know it, you'll have a monster that follows you around the tank like a dog would. But, uh, and I'm looking forward to those days as well, because you can see, how couldn't you love a little face like that? Look, little beady eyes are watching you. He's got one eye on me and one eye on that, on that prawn there. And he's thinking, I'm going to have that. As soon as he's gone, that prawn's mine. Now, as you can see, the paludarium is looking awesome as usual. Everything's growing lovely. Now he's got all this room here, all the way along there, all the way back along here, to where he's sat, like a miserable old man, in the corner. I'll just adjust this for you so you can, you can see him a bit better and get my reflections out of the way. And maybe if I actually stand out of the way a little bit more now, he may come out and have a go at that prawn if he thinks I'm gone. I'm standing here, it's freezing cold in the workshop. I've got my heater on next to me, blowing warm air all over me, which is lovely. So he doesn't have to look at me now. He can keep a, he's got a beady eye on that prawn. So let's see what he does with that. Yeah, you were right, guys. The pebbles looked a lot better. I think I was gonna keep the pebbles, I had it in my mind from the first. They look so much more natural. The Dragonstone didn't really fit in with the theme. It's basically like a tropical English <laughs> aquarium, paludarium now, sorry. But I've got lots of alodia and different plants in there, just for the time being, because that grows quite well. It's a highly oxygenating plant, if you didn't know that. And um, But I'll put other things in there as well. Now with these guys, what you've got to do as well I, well, I've found with various other puffer fish that I've kept throughout the years is that if they can see, they need things to break up their vision to make them explore. Now, if you've got a tank, uh, sorry, if you've got a puffer fish, maybe it's a figure of eight or a, uh, a little green puffer fish or anything like that, or even in your marine tank, you may have noticed them just going up and down the glass, up and down the glass, to the surface, to the bottom, and not going anywhere. Now, that's, that is stress. 
Okay, something could be bugging them and making them go up and down. But when they're just sitting on the bottom like this, it's, um, it's definitely a sign of something different. Now, I'm not sure how old this guy is. No idea. Could be kept, could, may have been kept in a very small tank, like I say, so that's why he's, he doesn't move around a great deal. But I'm sure in time he's going to get, he's going to get a lot more brave and he's going to be coming out, venturing around the tank, which is why I said you've got to keep big, bigger stones in there, things that they can swim around and explore. And, um, and it, just, it just keeps their brain active. They're an intelligent fish. They're not like, you know, just your normal, your normal fish. They'll just swim around, blase, and not happen. These guys need to be, um, they're like an octopus, I would say. Obviously, nowhere near as intelligent as an octopus, but they love to just cruise around and look at stuff and have something different in the aquarium. That's why I, in, before I put in, in, in the evening time, I'll go down and I'll put in something different when the, the lights are out or when they wake up in the morning, it's like, whoa, what's that? Now let's go and explore it and see what it is in my, in my little area, in my tank. This is my territory, I want to see what you are and uh, see if you're going to be a threat. And it's great for them because it gives them something to do. If you see these guys in the wild, they'll hang around in pairs and different things in the shallows, in the rivers, sunbathing and all that kind of stuff. They're fantastic fish to watch. I think there's a few natural you know, documentaries online about where you can watch these things in their native habitat and they're beautiful fish to watch. But they do need some looking after. And he's gonna have this tank all to himself. I'm gonna add some more fish in here. Um, I think, you know, give it, a, give it another week or a couple of weeks, let everything settle down bacterial wise in the system and then I might add some more little fast fish in there just as clean-up crew because like I said they're messy eaters and I want that tank water to be pristine so those little harlequins can't wait for him to eat that they're just hovering just out of sight just popping in and out of the side of the camera there <laughs> waiting for him to eat it you see those oh you can't see them there but they were they may come a bit further forward displaying away it's lovely to see them. They've got a huge tank to themselves now and they've, they've been spawning away, like I said. Brilliant stuff. I think what I'm going to do now, he knows I'm here still, he can still hear me talking I think, so what I'm going to do is now I'm going to go past the camera, uh, I'm going to go and make, make myself a nice coffee and then I'm going to wait for a little bit, I'm going to spy on him with my other video camera which I've got set up and then when I come back, I hope, well I'll watch him hopefully eat it and then I'll come back and we'll do a little bit more at a different angle for you. Well, don't put too much effort into that, will you? <laughs> that was that was funny. I was sat in my living room then watching him and he sucked that in and I was laughing my head off looking at the wife, just nipped that little bit off at the end, fell to the floor and then he went and floated back down to sleep. My goodness. You take it easy in there, mate. Take it easy. Don't overdo it. He does make me laugh already. I, I, I can see he's going to be a, a great addition to the... Uh, to the workshop here for you guys for future videos stick him out there make him famous share it as much as you can and also we've got to put up we've got to come up with a name for him as well now like i said it could be a boy or a girl i'm not too sure it has got lovely eyes i must say so it's entirely up to you i'm going to let you guys pick what you think he or she should be called so stick your uh, stick your your entries in the comment section below and um, and we'll see what the best one is and we can come up with a good name for him or her. Anyway guys, I think I'll leave this one as it is for now. And as always, you're all stars, love you loads, take care and I'll see you 
on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. Well, hopefully, we'll have a new name and a little bit more movement. Bye for now. <laughs>